Hey, how's it going? So I'm the only speaker under 21 tonight, so I have the inherent problem of breaking the second rule, whereas everyone has been following it for the last two hours and now has to listen to my presentation. And I'm going to be talking about building an engineer. Uh, my name is Jeremy Blum, and you can visit my website or follow me on Twitter or whatever. So uh, what makes an engineer? Is it the number of hours you spend awake doing a project? In this case, it was 32 hours awake. Last night, I was up until 7 AM programming a website. So I'm running on very little sleep right now. Um, but yeah, so is it the amount of dedication that you put into a project that makes an engineer? Is it how much time you're willing to dedicate to it? Is it how many you've completed? That's a robot that plays guitar here, a robot that climbs a structure, a prosthetic hand, a solar-powered house, a claw you control over the internet, a light-up LED matrix, a car that you control with a glove, a jack-in-the-box, and a Nerf sentry gun. So those are some of the projects I've done. Um, does that make me an engineer? I have no idea. Is it a degree? When I graduate from Cornell with a degree in electrical computer engineering, assuming I don't fail any classes, uh, does that make me an electrical engineer now? Am I, can I call myself an electrical engineer and go around and be like, oh, I can build that computer for you, no problem. I have all this knowledge. The way I define an engineer is someone who makes awesome shit. Uh, <laughs> you have the physicist uh, you know, theorizing, philosophy conferences, oh, this is this, whatever. Engineering, we put lasers on shit, we send stuff into space, we build computers, we all do all this amazing stuff. But what's the problem here? What the hell, America? Seriously, that line is China. America is the solid black line. We've actually decreased in the number of engineering degrees that we've given out over the last several decades. What's the deal with that? Um, <laughs> we're supposed to be making this community of engineers that makes the world a better place. So who cares? Um, all those people. Engineers are the people that make heart monitors that help keep people alive, the people that help solve poverty, the people that do all these amazing things. Uh, and yet, America is producing less and less of them and that's going to end up being a huge problem. Uh, a perfect example, this is a company I worked for over the past summer called DECA. They're currently making a prosthetic arm that's brain controlled for people coming back from war. A uh, perfect example of how engineering can help save the world. Uh, it really makes people's lives better. So why is it happening? Why are people not going into the engineering field as much anymore? One argument is Apple. Um, <laughs> You know, you have all these people, you have to hack away at your computer, get something to work, get into it. Now, Apple, you can be a complete idiot and be able to make an HD movie. Uh, they can show you all your friends. That's great. That's amazing. But, uh, you know, you don't get the hacking experience. Another perfect example is car engines. That's an Audi engine from last year. It looks like a toy. It's basically made out of plastic on the top. And then you have these disposable cell phones. Your phone breaks, you throw it in the garbage. You go get a new one instead of trying to fix it, like people would do uh, decades ago. So how I dealt with this, the first thing is Legos. It, it, did everyone here play with Legos? I really hope so. Yeah. Legos are awesome. Um, and I, every engineer I've ever met used Legos, and that's how they got into engineering. Uh, another way I dealt with it when I got a little bit older was that's a picture of me when I'm 12 in the wood shop at camp building furniture and shit. Um, that's me at a robotics competition in high school, and then that's a computer that I completely destroyed in the process of taking apart. It was already broken. It was already broken, but I did take it apart. Um, so. It, Coming back to Legos again, how do you educate the next generation? You have to give them the tools to succeed, the tools to get interested in this stuff, uh, to build and create, because that's what humans do. We build and create things, and that's amazing, and we can make the world better by doing that. Another perfect example are things like FIRST and Science Olympiad, for those people who aren't familiar with this kind of stuff. It's, it's like these awesome programs in high school. Kids build robots, they go to competitions, they learn about science, and th these are, th I participated in both of these, and they got me super interested, and I'm a huge like, nerd and geek, as you can probably tell from where, look at my, looking at my shirt. Um, the next thing is uh, open source, which is talked about several times tonight. This uh, provides a huge opportunity for people to collaborate. Yeah, clap it up. Open source is awesome. Um, a perfect example, Fab at Home. Jeff is here from the Fab at Home team tonight. That's built at Cornell's Computational Synthesis Lab. Hod, who talked earlier from there, so am I. Um, the Arduino, that's a bug lab thing. It basically lets you make your own cell phone from assemblable components that you can put together and do something really cool with it. In terms of things that I do to help promote open source and bring people together and educate them, uh, that's uh, a, p a video of my Guitar Hero robot that I built a few years ago. That's an Nerf Sentry gun I showed you. That has a quarter million views on YouTube now. Uh, my second most viewed video after how to apply thermal paste to a computer processor. Uh, I don't know why that has more. Um, these are two other things, open source projects. That's a claw that you control over the internet from your browser and there's a webcam. You can watch it move stuff around. That's something I just built last semester for one of my classes with three other uh, people. You use a glove and you drive the car around with hand motions. Um, so how does this knowledge work through the community to make people smarter and, and develop engineers? Some people would argue it doesn't work at all. This guy's like, oh, what a lame tutorial. What's next? How to pick your nose? Whereas these other people are like, oh, this is awesome. Like, now I want to be an engineer because of this, and I want to do things like this, and it's so cool. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Um, 
understanding how things work, both electronics and the human body and everything, um, gives us a better understanding of how we can make the world a better place. And engineers have the ability to do that. Thanks a lot. Jeremy Bloom, everybody. That's how you do it.